live here at Daytona International Speedway Cyber Racing Association All-Star Clash about to get underway. We got just about one minute left here in practice. I'm going to be joined by Jesse Gaby. Jesse, you there? Okay, he's not back yet, but he'll be back here in just a second. He went to go grab a drink or something real quick. So, uh, yeah, it should be a very, very exciting race here tonight. Uh, going to go down a little bit of the rules that's going on here. Cyber Racing, this is the first race of two tonight. A um, bunch of drivers are eligible here tonight. It looks like... All right, looks like we got a couple people that's already eligible for the main race. 75 laps for the main race open set. Tonight is uh, just a, well, right now, here in just a few seconds, is just a one race, 40 lap shootout. And trying to read some of the, says it, okay, so yeah. Uh, one lap race, 40 lap shootout, and it looks like no money is given out in this race. However, the big race there is uh, a $150 payout. I could be wrong about that. I will find out for sure. And um, we'll, we'll definitely get back to you on that for sure. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be broadcasting Cyber Racing Association all week. And um, I also want to bring in another broadcaster of mine, Derek Pemberton. Derek, are you there? Derek, are you yeah, I'm here. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get you to come into the session. By the way, it's under league sessions. I know you just right. kind of late, so. <laughs> so yeah, qualifying getting that. underway now. Qualifying is getting underway now. We will uh, be watching some qualifying as we see what happens here. And uh, you can already see the number 98 pulling out of the pits. As we get ready to watch him qualify. Two qualifying laps here. Um, it looks like I will find out for sure. I can find out exactly how many drivers in this race. I'm sorry, how many. Um, however, 16 are eligible, but they all have to finish a race. If they don't finish a race, then they're not eligible for the main event. And um, we'll uh, see what happens. 40 lap race tonight, like I said. Derek should be a very exciting race. Yeah, it should be. You know, uh, like I said, it's laps and. Some of these guys, of course, like you said, they've just got to make it to the end of this race. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how they're going to strategize to try to keep themselves in this race so they can make it to the end and, of course, be able to still be able to race in that main event. One thing that's interesting is um, with, with this type of racing in general, you don't know a whole lot about these guys. There are some really good racers in this first race. However, they have to manage to race their way into the main race, and uh, that's what we'll see if they could show that they're made of or do they have what it takes to race them on some of the top best and I think that's Jesse coming back now. <laughs> Jesse, you with me still? Uh, yes, yeah, progress. Thanks. He had to go feed his face. So, <laughs> now we're uh, <laughs> now we're watching the number 90 out on track right now and uh, you can see him as Dana Osborne uh, currently, well, just now on his green flag lap. We'll see if he can put down a faster lap and see where he takes and puts his number 90 truck. Any driver that you see with a higher digit of 99 is not eligible for the race. So keep that in mind as well. As, uh, yeah, like I said, it's going to be fun. Now you see Derek, or the Anderson 9 right now, number 43 truck is currently on the pole. Here comes Dana Osborne, going to put out a lap of 51-0-1-3. Jumps him up to second place in that number 90 truck, so a good run there. We'll see if he's able to hold on to that <coughs> as uh, he is now on his white flag lap. Like I said, this is just a 40 lap event. Uh, should have call, or, uh, pit stops, I believe. I believe they said around 32 laps. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah, I believe uh, it should be around 31 laps. I believe they said they were running good for some fuel, so. Okay. Um, Jesse, is there any way to stretch that and try to make it, you know, a little bit further? I mean, or do you even want to attempt it or anything like that? And the drafts can help a little bit, but uh, overall speaking, I don't think there's any real huge way to stretch it um, okay. any further than the 31 or 32 laps. Okay. 
So those look like the, the number 90 truck will be on second right now. You can pop up the results here and we'll take a look here. Currently, David Anderson in that number uh, 43 truck, who is eligible uh, to try to make it over to the next race. Uh, Jeff Figlin, I believe how you say his last name, uh, Figlan. Uh, currently in number 98, yep. uh, Chris Bland, uh, Roger Buff, and that's your top five. And now Gary Champion actually jumped up. I heard Gary's actually a really tough driver, so we'll see if we can do anything here as well. Derek, have you loaded in yet? Uh, I've been having a problem with the iRacing, but I just now got it up so, uh, about the end of the session now. Okay. So, <coughs> so yeah. One cool thing about the latest update that um, happened is you can actually see some of these guys qualify whenever you're spectating, so that's really cool. Um, you can either hear the other cars still qualifying when it don't show them, which is pretty neat, I think. I think it's really neat that they did that. Maybe Irish is finally getting it under control. Probably not, but here's a zero Currently in the 14th place, put out a 58.257 and uh, exit out of his truck. Oh, there he is again. He's coming up here, road looks like. So I've got a question for both y'all here. 40 laps. How many yellows do you expect to see probably within the first 20 laps or so? Because, you know, most of those guys are probably going to be sitting there trying to keep it easy. But, honestly, how many yellows do you think you could possibly end up seeing, though, in those first 20 to 30 laps? I'm going to be honest. I know a little bit about the lead. I don't know a lot about the guys that's in this race. I think we're going to only have one caution. We're going to only have one caution. And I think Jesse? it will be at the end of the race. Uh, it's a pretty tall order, I think. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's Daytona, right? So I mean, uh, slight mistake, especially if you run into too wide here. Look it looks like trouble. we're good. So, oh, I know. Uh, take a look here at your grid. Get ready to grid here. With the... so we'll... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, stepped on you a little bit. David Anderson did get the pole. Dana Osborne will get second as you take a look here at your rundown. Uh, be sure to check out CyberRacing.club and you can learn more about this awesome group of guys and race. Uh, Chris Bland, Jerry. Gary Champion in row number three. Row number four consists of Roger Buff and Jason. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm, I'm not going to pronounce it. I'm sorry. In the number 96 car. The number nine. I will find out before. Hopefully, if he makes the next round. Um, Brandon Leary in row number five alongside David Lanza. There is the rest of your field as they scroll by. <coughs> Justin Levine back on row number eight. And that's going to be it, I believe. Um, so, yeah, we're going to grid them up, as you can see right now, on pit road, number 43 truck. David Anderson starting up there behind the rough pace car. What's your guys' thoughts on the new pace car? Do you all like it, or what do you, what do you think? Yeah, it, it doesn't really, uh, I guess, especially when you do, when all you do is a lot of stock car racing. The pace car just doesn't seem like it fits in real well with it. But, I mean, I like it. At least they're trying. They're trying to get it better. Something different, yeah. What do you think, Jesse? Hey! Like everybody else who's probably got an opinion on this, it's something different. So Yeah. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. Uh, to me, I like I liked the Mustang. I was kind of old to see the paint. So, it's co cool that they go back to the original iRacing paint scheme. Um, you know, if I'm a road racer, I love the pace car. Um, but I'm an oval racer, so, you know, I kind of lean towards not liking it as much, but I'm definitely glad that they did put something different, as we are now rolling off the grid. So, you can see. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like we got about 15 drivers rolling off the grid. Uh, I'm probably wrong about that, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, great. A simulator would have crashed. I'm fine. Slow back. There I am. Well, we will get ready to see what happens here. 40 laps here for the Cyber Racing Association All-Star Clash Last Chance Race. Pretty much, you have to finish this race in order to carry over into the next session. The guys with above the number 99 will not be eligible to go into the next race. There is a couple of them in here. I'm counting at least two that I've seen. Um, I'm, there may be a couple more uh, with drivers above the 99. So, actually, I think Wait, there's, there's, three. Was that a, 
Okay. So, so they are, they are not eligible to race in the All Star Clash for I believe it's a hundred fifty dollar payout. And Derek, you can go stop breathing. This mic is very sensitive. <laughs> picks up like literally. <laughs> yeah, it picks up literally everything. Like I heard it one time, and I was like 50 feet away, and it picked up me saying something. I was oh, like, I know. I've heard Ugh. it before in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You're fine. All right. So uh, yeah, here we go, man. We're getting ready to uh, wave the green flag here. <clears throat> here in just a few moments, as these guys. Get ready to take the green flag, and we are green flag is out, and we are racing here at Daytona. Number 43, uh, David Anderson already trying to hold on to that bottom, getting a push from that number 98, uh, Finn Figlin. So to get you to say that already on the bumper is that number 98 truck. Yeah, that outside line really didn't get a good start. Yeah, you can see that the outside line of uh, David Osborne is already falling back to the fourth position right now and uh, trying to hold on. So what what do you got to do to make that high line work in these trucks? Uh, just get everybody bunched up as close together as possible. Um, we've seen it before. Uh, you guys, obviously, at the broadcast with the Center Force Championship, you guys saw uh, that outside line can work really well as long as you got a little bit of help and got guys that know what they're doing. So we're going to see what happens here as this outside line actually starts to make a run right here. Ooh, Honestly, uh, I think. I'm sorry. I just ahead. think the outside line. You, I'm just saying, on the outside line, really, you just got to get guys that are going to stay committed, and just can get nose to tail, and are going to be willing that hey, some laps, you know, we're going to fall back a little bit, but you got to stay committed, and eventually you guys will work all the way up there. And eventually, you know, you'll be able to start knocking away that inside line. Eventually, everyone's just going to try to move to the outside lane. And so, honestly, let, I, I think that. Let me ask this, and I want both, uh, Jesse, I want you to elaborate on it, and I want to hear what Derek's thoughts are as well. Um, well. There's two different parts to this question. Actually, I need to switch something over. I'm sorry. Um, there's two parts to this question, so we'll get Derek's first, or Jesse's first answer to why it's Derek. Jesse, if you're working a high line, how do you utilize the side draft? Can you utilize the side draft to make that high line work? Yeah, um, you really kind of want to keep the low line pinched as close to that yellow line as possible, and then they're going to end up getting a little bit of a run on the exit of the corner, as you can see there, but if you can work up to their uh, their quarter panel, you'll kind of suck the air off the side of them and pull them back a little bit as you head down the straightaway. Well, now, Derek, let me ask you, um, as we go into turn number three and four, <laughs> um, let me go ahead and ask you now, actually, yeah, this is turn three and four. What would be your strategy for this race? Would you just, if you're, okay, so if you're going to try to make the race. Now, this race, there is no payouts, okay? So, if you're trying to make the race, the wins don't mean much in this race. Would you just mm -hmm. lay back to try to make the next race and not show people? Or would you want to try to race for the win to show people you can do something? Especially being now it's broadcasted so. and stuff like that. So, what, what's your opinion on it? Um... I mean, yeah, jumping back, you could be wreck, safe. Trouble. Oh, oh, the wreck, wreck. Oh, oh, big wreck. What you doing there, bud? Um, I had no idea what happened there. Roger Buff is involved. Uh, looks like the 98 pos or 96, I believe, is involved. Uh, we're going to get a replay right here and find out. And I just realized that I have my actual spotter on. I'm going to take him off. You see right there. Yeah, it looks... Looks like we just had a big checkup from the uh, the O13, I believe it is. Of the O12, the 012. It's had a little bit of a checkup and uh, it's kind of accordioned into the rear end there. And so we're riding on board now with the 33. This is David Lanza. A little bit of a bump there from that checkup, and you can see uh, some damage already involved. Uh, one of them trucks was not eligible, you can see that, but the 33 truck is eligible, and that's not what they wanted to happen. So, we do have a caution came out early, so I was wrong about my prediction. And, uh, I'll, take, I'll take that money. <laughs> so, you can see right here, uh, real fast, I'm going to do something real quick. i got to make sure my spot is cut off. I got to go. So, 
But you know, that is just typical Daytona Speedway pack racing, oh, yeah, though. I, I, mean, I mean, you can't really blame that on anybody, but then again, though, I mean, you got to think it's Daytona, and everyone's trying to, you would hope that everyone in that front back is trying to push you get up to the front there, and I think that's just maybe some, someone not um, showing a, maybe just a little bit of patience that they might have needed maybe to just keep it keep it green here as uh, we do got some pit stops happening here. So, yeah, let me ask about some pit stops that's coming in. Um, we talked about possible 31 laps, and it looks like we only had three stay out. Good call, Jesse and Derek, on y'all's opinion. Um, I think we're still going to see another caution, so to get some laps led, I think it's a great idea. Um, it keeps you out of, kind of keeps you out of the trouble a little bit, too. So let me, ask you, let me ask you the same question, Jesse, that I asked Derek um, before that wreck happened. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be up front? I mean, if you have, basically, the guys that's eligible are really, they're eligible already. They just have to finish the race. Do you ride in the back and try to finish the race? We've got someone really slow on the road. I don't know who that is. Possible wait on a teammate, I believe. But what's your opinion on it? Yeah, I think if uh, if you've already got a spot locked to the uh, to the All Star race here, I think um, you know I think you just kind of ride around, just take it easy, log some laps before the next race, and uh, make sure you're ready to go. Now, of course, now you do want to go in and start practicing a little bit of the draft, though. You got to think about that too. So these guys are probably all these guys that are. Uh, already locked in they're probably just going to try to you know just get a little bit of practice with each other so they know who's the best way or that way they can maybe hopefully whenever it comes to the actual race maybe they can hook up in the actual race and be able to push forward so i got a weird question i want to ask everybody because we talk about some weird stuff sometimes in precaution um oh that's true what's everybody's drinking choice for not drinking choice <laughs> Pet, pepsi I got two liter Pepsi just sitting here. <laughs> what you drink? Jesse's from Canada, so he's probably drinking molasses. But what are you drinking, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a half liter jug, my uh, Sunny D. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sunny D. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, though, I slipped and I fell trying to walk in this morning or That's this funny. evening. I, yeah, I was trying to <laughs> rush and I. I didn't realize that there was ice right where I stepped, and I just slipped and fell, and it really hurt. That is, that, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> See, up here in Canada, we uh, put some ice on the bottom of our boots. So <laughs> okay, okay, but do remember, we're both in Tennessee over here. We don't, we, we don't get snow and ice. Uh, actually, you speak for yourself. We actually do. <laughs> You're a lower part of Tennessee. Okay, over here, a little bit here in West Tennessee, <laughs> we don't go. get snow. We don't really get a lot so of here either, here. but when we do, you know, you can imagine what it's like. Even Paul Jesse, was going, I'll tell you even that. the dogs up in Canada, you know, they have spots on their, you know, their feet. <laughs> They're good to go. <laughs> That's how Jesse gets to town. They just like sled dogs. They don't out. Yeah, exactly. It's my the ride. Things we, the things we talk about under caution. <laughs> 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 the things we do. Yeah, right. All right, so you can see uh, the number 90 of uh, Dana Osborne. Uh, keep an eye on that number 18. You start to see his work his way up a little bit here as well. And uh, Greg Champion. Or is it Greg Champion or Gary Champion? I'm sorry. Gary Champion. I don't know why I said Greg. Might be a good idea for me to actually fix the overlay where it shows the full name. Just so I can not have to look down at my little sheet of paper thing over here. Yeah, that might be nice. Yeah. So we should be on uh, two to green right now. We're gonna go back here soon, I would guess. I think we're coming to the one to go sign. We'll see if the pace lights go out on the Porsche pace car, and they do, it looks like. Yeah, they do. All right, so we're gonna double them up and get ready to go back. Take a look out of uh, right rear side of the AC Del or AC Delco, ACDC number 90. Dana Osborne. Do you know who ACDC is, Jesse? Absolutely. Of course okay, you do. He said, I'm, I'm about to say, if he said no, I'm just going to from the I'm, team. I'm just leaving. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just, just came out of the broadcast. Yeah, no more broadcast. You're done. <laughs> so you see that number 130 truck up on that high side. He is not Chase eligible. He is sitting in sixth right now. So if you're someone like him, um, 
That's Bland, by the way. If you're someone like him, you're lucky to get up there and try to run. Oh, absolutely. And especially if you got like a rival that, you know, yeah. he's up in the front. And I'm not saying go up there and take him out, but I'm like, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make sure you're, he works his butt off just to yeah, get around you. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I've done that several times. Just you know, just especially if I don't like him, <laughs> race him harder, race him hard. That's uh, what I, would I, say. I definitely understand that. I can understand that. Or just leave him out to dry. Either one. Yeah, that works too. Um, we did see that high side start working a little bit. Uh, you think they're going to try to make it work here, or do you think that everybody try to get that five? Um, this early in, you you should hopefully see them get single file until probably about ten to go, but there's no challenge. Right. So uh, make sure, guys, keep in mind as hold on, pace cars in. We are back to racing as then Osborne leads them to the green flag, forty three already pushing him. Outside line once again, not a great start. Here comes that 012 car on that bottom line as well. He's trying to take, uh, move his way up from, looks like around fifth up to third as he's trying to work his way up. All right, but yeah, keep in mind, guys, we also got one more race tonight starting at around 855, the All Star main event, as we get ready to go live to that here in just a couple hours. As you can tell right there, uh, one of these shots just showed that, you know, these, the, uh, the, the uh, front two on the top and bottom, uh, the outside lane actually got in front of this inside line about halfway down the back straightaway, which was shocking because, I mean, that third truck on the inside line, he was almost evened up with them entering turn one. You know, so, I'm noticing something too as well. They're spacing out a little bit. Yes, and that's a strange to me. I'm surprised how that's yeah, happening. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we got, you know, this front pack kind of, we got two on the outside as uh, we got about five on the inside line, two on the outside. Then there's another small pack. We got three wide now right here. This right here could be trouble up front. And here comes the number 98 truck making the three wide. He actually gets around the 18 truck. An 18 truck may be trying to fall back to the back a little bit here as well. That may be communication going on. How much communication goes on in these races, Jesse? Um, not very much, to be honest. Everybody's trying to concentrate and try to, try to figure out a way to get up to the front or so, just try and stay out of trouble. So, do, do you plan on who you want to work with or you know, you just go and see what happens? But, yeah, there's kind of like a sense Especially if you practice with the person, you kind of got an idea. So there's kind of like that sixth sense that the drivers out here have, that they know what the other driver can do, and they'll kind of work with them. Especially if it's your teammate, especially early in the race, uh, you're more willing to work with your teammates, you know, probably about, for the about, you know, probably for the first half of the race, maybe a little bit over. But, you know, it's kind of the lap start dwindling away, you know, your teammates just kind of, too much turn into your enemies at that point. So I mean, you, you see, you're willing to work with anybody. You can see that uh, we actually had a car hit the apron right there a little bit, but he's gonna be okay with the 58 car and uh, or truck, sorry, of uh, Peterson. But you can see that the group actually has caught back up for the most part. The 33 actually got involved in that first strike. He's actually up there running as well. He didn't get a whole lot of damage from that. So. Some of these guys that actually, from that first caution, didn't really get a whole lot of damage that I noticed. Uh, anybody happen to see uh, anybody with a, a lot of damage from that first wreck? Uh, no, uh, I didn't really see too much. I saw a car get turned near the outside wall. It's uh, I'm not exactly sure what's uh, yeah, yeah, what I've, transpired after that. Yeah, I was thinking that's probably the guy that probably the most damage is the one that got turned back up into the outside. In the outside wall, and that's the only way I would think that's that's probably the most damage. This time it was David Anderson was able to get back in front and lead that lap on that high side. He's actually making that high line work for where he wants to be. I mean, he is getting the run off the corner, carrying the momentum down the straightaways, and actually taking the lead away right before they cross the stripe. As you can see, he just did it again. Uh, currently holding the lead over the 90 of Osborne. So we'll continue to watch this and see if the 43. Will leave the 98 out, or will he try to bring the 98 with him? Right now, that 98 is a really good pusher up on that high side. He is glued to the back end of that 43. And 
I've been on both scenarios here, being the guy pushing the guy up in the front. So when you're the guy up front, you don't want to leave your uh, pushing partner out to dry. But if you see the opportunity come and you're at the lead at Daytona, I mean, your instincts show you to get down, even though it's a teammate behind you, maybe. And as the guy that's the pusher, I mean, that's almost heartbreaking. You worked your butt off to get you and your teammate up there, and he just leaves you out like that. Sometimes, had a car. You, know, sometimes you gotta understand that. We had a car a little bit for the back stroke wall, but look at now, look at the high side. The high side is really formed up, and they are nose to tail. The bottom side, the 18 can't get to the back end of that uh, 012 truck, so he's having trouble. Right now, the high line is really starting to form up, and that could wind up playing something. You know, we'll watch and see um, what the 33 could play a factor here, depending on what he does. He could actually move down if he chooses to, but here comes the 96, I believe, uh, also catching into this draft, so he could play a factor here as well. And like I said earlier, to get the outside lane to work, you got to have people that are committed. I've seen some races where some people just going down the back straightaway, they'll change lanes three times. They go from the bottom of the top back to the bottom. And right here, you can tell everyone's kind of, if they got an opportunity to move, they keep it right there. So you see the 98, 98. going up. He yeah, might guessing, be low. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He might be actually showing a little bit of temps right now as far as, you know, what his... I don't know how long you can actually run behind someone. Uh, I'm not seeing any drop in RP, you know, but I don't have the temps or so. And that could actually almost end up hurting this uh, 49, 9, 43 actually. 43, uh, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you got to think, I mean, that guy, that uh, 98 was just all over the back. Yeah, he was doing a really good nose. job of pushing. Now, I don't know, this guy always really pushing them up there, so I don't know. Um, you would hope that it's just the, uh, you, you would hope that it's just the 43 truck, but you never know. So Jesse, if you're this 90 truck and uh, you're leading the way right now, whenever somebody's behind you like this your 12 car is, uh, Bland, do you actually enter the turn? I know he's right at the bottom, um, which you know is, is common here at Daytona, but do you enter the turn just a little bit higher so that driver in that 012 truck can probably see that yellow line and see where the turn in is? Yeah, you're, you're probably riding about a, you know, a quarter of a car up off of that yellow line, so the, uh, so the driver behind you can have a clear view of it. Because the uh, spoilers on these trucks are very high. Yeah. Now, I noticed that, you know, in the, um, the Xfinity, you know, we race Xfinity in the CFR championship, but I noticed that, oh, a 43 may have come up a little bit there on uh, the 08, as we got a little bit of an issue going on, but it worked itself out, so we're okay. But, um, yeah, the 08s, or the 43 slid up a little bit, almost got back into the 08. Everything's going to work itself out. Now, the 43 going on the back straight away, he was clear to move down. As you can tell, he didn't move down. But he, he, was, he had the opportunity to move down if he wanted to. So that kind of so, tells I mean, you he don't want to leave the 08, yeah. Yeah, he, it looked like he wants to take, you know, whoever's pushing him to get down to the bottom. As you can tell, everyone's kind of started to shift back down to the bottom. Uh, these trucks are all over the place. So, yeah, well, and we're that, having a really good run right now at 23 laps. Now, we got to keep in mind that these guys, some of these guys did not hit. And, yes, I, you know, it, there was like three or four that actually stayed out. And that could, we'll see what that does. Now, now that one, that first yellow just looked like a pack racing incident. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, as these laps kind of start twinning down as we're about two lap, one or two laps away here, being at the halfway point, you're going to start seeing some crazy, you're going to start having a lot of crazy moves and everything. Everyone, everyone that needs to get up to the front, they're not going to, if they see a small gap, one that, you know, the truck might be able to fit, they're going to take it. They're going to yeah, take any opportunity they can. And, I mean... That that's what's going to end up causing the break is someone someone having to make a move to try to win this race, or at least put them up, or at least to put themselves in a good position to, and that's what's going to end up causing this wreck in probably this the next. forty three is actually going to get a huge run now that you're off the corner. Okay. Yeah, it looks like the O twelve kind of backed off of them just a little bit. See that forty three actually did take that lead away just oh, now. And we're now three wide going into turn one right here. Yep, here we go. Here comes the 08 up on that high side. Nobody's going up there to help him. So right now this is gonna hurt the forty three possibly. 
and it should help that bottom line. We'll see what happens here. Actually, they may be trying to go run that 08. That 08 possibly could be. Oh, 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 there he goes. Oh, what's upside? Oh, my goodness. 43 around. Someone's on his top. And I think that was the 0 12. Yeah. Yeah. And 0 12 of Chris Bland. Oh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. The 0 12 looks like he may have blew up as well, so he won't be able to probably finish the race. The 43 is rolling. We'll get a replay. And uh, see and, what uh, happens. I don't know if that, oh, that's a terrible incident here. It looks like it only involved those two trucks. So, I mean, not that many trucks were taken out there in that incident, but, I mean, uh, I early. can't tell if that 130 car or truck got any damage. That was the target car. He looked like he kind of went underneath. I want to get a view real fast riding on board with the uh, 08. Hey Adam, this is Dwayne. I was looking at the replay on that and you could have fit a fat Danica Patrick between them two trucks. That was I race and Echo. Oh, okay. Alright, so there you have it. That was uh, just I race and Echo. Heard it from Dwayne. He is uh, one of the league, or actually is the league admin. That was a fun ride. And you can see right there as uh, our second caution of the night comes out as we are halfway through this race now and it looks like the 90 car will continue to lead the way and what do y'all guys think they're going to pair right i think half uh, i would actually say everyone if they're in their right mind unless someone wants to try to really push it here everyone's going to come down this time and try to see if they can make it to the end uh, you might have someone yeah because with the last caution we were not able to make it on fuel even at 32 laps we we're not able to make it you we were two oh. laps short that's about what I'm thinking. We do have a lot of people coming up pit road. It looks like everyone I'm going to come down pit road. So we're going to have a race off pit road. It should be fun to watch. As you can already see, the 08 getting ready to go into his pit box. And we'll continue to watch this and see who wins the race off pit road. Now, do you think people are probably going to take tires here? Or do you that's think everyone... That's a good everyone... question. I mean, that's a good question. You don't really have to take tires. I mean, 40 lap race is a very short race. So that's a good question. You see the 43 coming to his pit box. Here comes the race off pit road. It looks oh, like the 90, wow. the 20, I can't even tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> After that, was, that, I was close. Yeah, that was funny. Like we look. had um, mostly everybody take two tires here. Okay. Now the 43 is going to stay in and get his damage fixed. Here comes the rest of the race off pit. Actually, the 43 right. is coming out. So, Did they have fast repairs? I did not check. Uh, they I'm have, yeah, they I'm may not have sure. have one. They have one. Okay, they did have one. Yeah. Okay, so the 43 is going to be good. The 08 is going to be good. Uh, 0 12, if he made it, I think he did make it back to pit road. That's Chris Bland. He did make it back to pit road. He's actually sitting there. I don't know if something's going on. Maybe I think he made it back to pit road. He may not have. I know he was actually blowing up. So um, The 124 truck, that's what I'm thinking of, uh, made it out of the pit road second place. That is Sawyer yeah, Ott. I haven't really talked about him, but good looking truck he's driving. Uh, Chevrolet Silverado, of course, it's a good looking truck. Currently sitting in second after starting 12th out of Mid-South. You know, I just noticed something. My uh, ticker thing is not exactly working right. Like the distance of how far they are back. I need to fix that after these races. Yeah. So now that we've got over half this race over, we've seen, you know, one kind of big incident, and then we've seen one big one. Yeah, of course, both of them only taking out two or three cars. How much, do you think these guys are going to settle down now for sure, for probably a good ten laps or so, so right there at the end, or do you think these guys are going to go balls to the wall here for these next 20, or 20, to, 20 to 20 laps, yeah. Yeah, I want to be honest, uh, we've seen them racing really hard to you know the whole race so I, i'm not going to be surprised if we see it you know happen again i mean you know we've seen them pretty wide i mean a lot of that was probably just somebody getting out of line just to cool down but it wouldn't surprise me at all to see somebody go back up to the high side and try to just run that high side again i mean these guys seem like i mean they've, it's been a good racing so far i ain't gonna lie it's been a really good racing the accident you know like we heard it was net code so it was good racing i mean that, that's just I racing for you though, you know, with the net code issues and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see it. I mean, we may see more drivers, like you said, stay on the bottom and not run the high side as much. 
Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the 90 does here, as well as the 124. And uh, then we got Champion back there in third. He's really fast, so we can see what he'll also do. And the 96 is not far behind. Who's shown it? He's got speed. So I think any of these top guys right now still have a really good chance of winning. Well, Adam, I'll be honest with you. I think a couple of them are, are going to slack off because everybody advances, but they have to finish the race. So they've already pulled out their backups and their one reset. So watch some of these guys just drop back and hang around and just finish the race. Oh, that's right. Yeah, like they Dana all have to front. finish. They have, yeah, Dana has an extra reset. The guys that have it, they'll okay. be racing hard. But the ones that don't are going to be just trying to save it to the end. That is true. And I, I forgot all about that. They all do have to finish in order to advance. And, you know, when there's money on the line, everybody wants at least a chance to win it. So, yeah, you probably got a good point there. As we double them up, and we'll see if Dana Osborne can hold on and try to pick up the victory here in the Cyber Racing Association All-Star Class Last Chance Race. We got our second event coming up here, and not very long from now, just a little under. I don't know what time it is? Little, little bit, little bit over an hour. Okay. Uh, 7:35 yeah, Eastern right now. So not a very long. You know, not a very long gap in between these two races. And that's a lot of racing for some of these guys. You know, we've got 40 laps here, and then uh, we hop over there for a 75-lap shootout, which, when there's money on the line, that, that gives everybody something extra to race for. So it's going to be very interesting and very cool to see who picks up the victory there. And talk about, I'll tell you what, the type of racing is going to be a little bit different than how these guys are racing right here. I'll be honest, even though we're not even there yet, the racing, you can tell the racing is going to be a little bit different. I already have a feeling. Yeah. And now, Dwayne, you're still in here. How many drivers are actually in the main event right now that's guaranteed? We will max out at 43 drivers in there. The current drivers that are qualified are guys that won a race, won a pole, or qualified in chase last year in our league. Okay. And so that's the cream of the crop. You're going to see three wide races. You got some guys down there, Rodney Walford and Mark Ferguson and Eric Walker and them like that. They're not afraid to take it three wide and they'll hold it three wide but all the way around there. They'll race hard for that. So these guys here are just trying to make it to that race. Okay. As the green flag waves once again, Dana Osborne jumps out to about Carly advantage right now over the 18. Here comes the 18 coming up behind him at his Gary Champion and uh, trying. Watch for the run on the outside here. Yeah, the 96 as, got a big push on that 124 truck. Now, as you can see right there, the 90 kind of jumped out a little bit there on the main pack there. When you're on a restart there, how far out do you actually want to get it from the guy right behind you so that, you know, you can still get a decent jump on the outside lane, but that way you can also not get so far out there that everyone just, is just going to freight train around you. We, as, right, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> the 124 yeah, jumps to the lead. And that, and you know, the 96, or yeah, 96, he just got left out to dry as they Oh, crossover. 90. Yep, crossover from that 90. Nice. Oh, very nice move there. Uh, and I think they, this, this is interesting. Lead the lap. Yeah, you're right about that, Derek, mentioning that. Uh, the 96, you know, he, he, the 124 jumped down. Now, the 124 is not eligible, the 96 is. But with the 96, you know, maybe take a little bit of offense that the 124 just dived down I mean probably not I wouldn't think so but you know at the same time you know I think that he was like hey why did you leave me there <laughs> yeah because uh, I mean I've like I said I've had a teammate do that to me kind of in the back of your mind you're like are you serious like <laughs> did he just leave me out here and to, especially if you have no one behind you you do work your way all the way up there to the leaders all by yourself you two alone and everyone else on the inside lane? Yeah, you feel awful, but thank, uh, I guess in a way, thankfully, he was able to get back to his back bumper and keep pushing him here as, I mean, boy, and everyone's starting to get a little bit squirrely. You know, everyone kind of start, started to see, you know, there's about 13, 14 laps left. Get ready, because I'm telling you, the wreck's not over yet. The big one is there. still lurking. And that's what, you know, Dwayne mentioned that, you know, we expected a lot of people to fall back, and there has been people that actually have fell back. Uh, just because they want to finish the race and have a chance. Now, you know, he also mentioned that the 90 does still have that fast repair. You know, the 08, I don't think, has his fast repair. Um, 
I think you got it. Oh. Running, uh, 18 actually went a little lower than that. Got a little yeah. lower. I reckon Eric took the 130 actually hit the apron as well. So here's some good racing now. The 58. We haven't really spoke a lot about the 58. Who is that? Uh, uh, James Peterson. That's Started up in 11th place right now. Currently is working his way up through the field. Currently sitting in sixth. Um, we'll see how long he can hold it there, or if he's able to get up there and maybe take the win away here at the late end of this race. And now my tickers will be good. So finally, uh, and, uh, going back to the trial play on that last lap, you saw that the 124 was just up a little bit, a little bit higher than the 124, and the 58 was sitting there just pushing the 124 in the back. My thing is, is, what do you do if you're the 124 at that point? Do you just hang on for the ride and push through that 124, or do you get on the brakes and potentially cause the big one back behind you? And I'm, I, you know, that's a very good question. We got three wide going into turn one, but that's a very good question. And, you know, I, I think that's still to be seen, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, it, it like we almost saw it almost starts a wreck as they're three wide here yeah. coming up turn two. As like I said, these guys know what's what's happening. I mean, we're coming to eleven to go right here, yeah. so uh, be ready. A third I wonder. Gonna I wonder if that ninety six may be getting a little bit hot where he was running, so he pulled out a line, and now he's up on that high side. It's still three wide right now. Um, above the 15 truck but now he's going to fall back in line behind the 15 so he may have just shown a little bit of heat and, you know wasn't comfortable where he was running it out so uh you know we'll see no, we'll that time though the 124 was able to lead a lap now if now of course talking about the whole blowing up situation what lap whenever you see you're blowing up what lap after you go like ah, i don't care <laughs> we're gonna keep going yeah. well you know, we've mentioned a, you know, a couple times already. Oh, uh, we, got we got somebody going around. We got one oh, in the wall as well. 58 58. In the wall. No caution will come out from that, I don't think. And so. that's going to lead the 124 out all by himself. And he got down in front of the 90. Oh! oh that, that 90 wants that lead back. He's going to be all the way back of that 124. And I, I don't, yeah, I don't think know. we'll see blocking no. here. But, oh, well, here comes that 15 with a huge run off the outside lane. I think people. I think people need to realize that they're trying to make it to the next race, and that this race ain't as important as the big race coming up soon. Um, here on YouTube, by the way. Um, so I, I think you gotta be careful. Like we said, the '90s got that faster pair in the back. He's gonna do whatever he wants. Yeah, uh, and um, we're at ten to go right now. Yeah, ten and to go. This, this is right here, where you're gonna see. Yeah, ten to go. Yeah. I'm telling you, someone sees that small little gap, they're going to take it right here. I mean, this is pretty much, if you want to try to have a chance, this is where you got to do it, right here. Well, uh, what you got to keep in mind, too, guys, is them top three cars up there are all teammates on that Oh, okay. Line. Wow. That's very impressive that they're actually able to get up there. So they know what they're doing. You know, they do got that communication. I think they're actually in team speech as well. So they're definitely communicating on what they want to do so there's a chance we actually could see a one two three teammate finish which would be pretty neat to see as well no oh, hey that's the 43 back up there that's great to see that he came back after starting probably in the back of the pack worked his way all the way back up oh my oh, oh trouble oh, there it is. Oh, wreck. oh no they're gonna oh right back in the front of Caution traffic flies. yellow comes out oh I don't think anyone got no. Uh, 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 the 96, the 96 is smoking. Uh, he is trying to keep it where it won't blow up. That is huge. We will wait and see what happens with that. Trying to make it back. That is, you see right there, he is smoking. We're going to get a replay of this real fast. Let's see what exactly happened. Let's go up from our blimp view. That way we can get a better view of things. Looks like whoever was on the bottom yeah, side there yeah. came up a little bit. I can't tell if that was a 90 truck. Um, yeah, it's the 90 truck there on the bottom. Okay, well, we'll go to I the think the 90, from, from my view, it looks like the 96 just tried to make it three wide. It looks like, net, it looks like net code again. Looks like there was not a whole lot. Didn't look like the trucks were that close when, they, uh, when one truck got turned around. So, but oh, that's man. what it was, though, is they were trying, the 15 got left all by himself up there on the top lane, and the 96, he was trying to get up to the front. He was trying to stay behind the 15, and just, I think he maybe came down just a little bit much. Riding on board with the 33 of David Lanza. 
You can see the wreck happening. He almost made it out of this. Yeah, oh. right there, the last truck. He had to get hit by one more truck yep. and just couldn't do it. Yep. And I believe that's actually his second break he has been involved in. However, you know, the first one wasn't that bad. This one's bad. We're going to have a shootout here for the finish. Oh, yeah, well, that just make things real exciting. Yeah, it's going to make things really interesting. I'm, you know, and we do got some trucks coming on pit road, which I'm not surprised. Uh, the 90s definitely going to come down pit road. But, um, Jesse, you talked about it. You didn't think the caution was, was over yet. I'm kind of surprised personally by that. Um, just for the fact that this is just the last chance race that they just had to finish. So there may be a couple guys that don't finish. I don't know exactly right now who has who hasn't uh, finished yet. So hopefully we'll know here soon. Now imagine what this money race is going to be like if this is like this. The money race I'm really oh, looking well, forward to because like like they, Dwayne said earlier, that's where your top drivers are and really good drivers. So it's going to be really good to see. Now these guys. You know, they're good. I ain't going to take nothing away from them. They're good. But you're going to no. go, and they got to go compete with the drivers that are great and be really good. Be really so, good. somebody. Well, not, well, not, you also have some guys in here that's never raced together in this league. They're new drivers to the league, so they're having to get in there by this. You know, so they're not used to what each other are. Uh, you know, Dana Osborne, he's a good driver. Jason's a good driver, but they've never been on the track together. So, so that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. There, they didn't know, yeah, they didn't know what each other wanted to do. They both went for the same real estate there. So that makes a huge difference. And, you know, we've seen the 90, he's been up front for most of the race. And if he's able to finish, which I think he should, possibly, <laughs> um, as long as nothing else happens at the end. I think he actually did. Uh, I'm sure he used his fast repair. I'm trying to find him real fast so we can check him out. But you can see what I can find him. Yeah, he did use now, his fast repair. Now, like we said in the last stop, or in the last caution, we didn't think they could make it all the way with that being the if that was the last yellow. Um, how many? If anyone did stay out, I don't. I wasn't looking. If anyone stayed out or not, they'll make it now. There was a yeah, couple. They'll definitely make it now. Because, I mean, you got to think they're probably turning up the caution, the yeah. And, you know, they was only possibly only three laps short, possibly, maybe, and that's still, you know, we had a lot of them coming up here last time. So, like I said, I think they'll definitely make it now with no problems. Uh, the 031 truck may be shutting this car off. I can't really tell from that angle. Let me, uh, let me find out. Now, if they are probably shutting up the car, they're probably shutting up and get it down on the apron. You know, just so they can save as much fuel as possible. Yeah. Just get down to the flattest part of the track, turn the car off, put the clutch in, anything you can to make sure that engine is not running. It takes away a lot of fuel. Yeah, I actually thought the, you know, I thought that 031 of Troy Patterson, I thought he was actually cut his car off. I haven't seen it yet. I actually, I'm listening right now on board. And uh, he's just, I can't really tell. Yeah, he actually may just be letting it coast a little bit more. He could be shut it all the yeah. They should be good enough on fuel that they're probably just yeah. running around with your... Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm listening to race chatter here, and it's hilarious up front. Sewer, saw you odd, and Gary Champion is up here talking about, hey, we got a fast repair left. You want to race for the win, or you want to just roll over <laughs> and finish it? <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Hopefully, let's see if we can actually listen in. Maybe we'll get some of that. Possibly, anyway. Yeah, yeah I, they want to show us. See. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. So tell me, 124 and 18. Uh, coming to get the one, yeah. We're going to raise, but I'm going to make sure I finish as well. That's 130 going to push me to the win. I just got V, Dave Anderson. As long as things don't get too crazy around us, I'll push you. If it gets too insane, I'm backing out of it. I don't want to get wrecked on the last lap. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, I'm going to get room on the bottom and see if it's just I'm not going to hold him down there and try to wreck everybody. Simple. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Listen, 
I was trying to work out some strategy of the play because that was pretty cool to listen to. Alright, so we're getting ready to go racing here. Um, do we finish under green? No. You say no, Jesse? Absolutely not. I'm going to say we do. Well, I don't care. Oh, for one. I'll go for you're one already. For one, right? um, if there's a wreck, I think it'll be coming to the checker, but I think everybody will finish. That's why I fell on track. So, this is going to be now, interesting to see. Now, Jesse, you are kind of in the situation in our league. You know, there's not that many laps left, and, you know, some of these guys could still be trying to race for it. What was your kind of strategy back in our day, Tony Race, when, you know, you're not up there in the front, but you've got a decent shot at maybe getting up there? Uh, I think my situation was a little bit different starting pretty much from two laps down since the beginning of the race. So once I got up there, I was kind of like, well, I pushed it this hard so far. I might as well push it hard all the way. No, that, but, the whole I situation is different as well. Adam, let me put my point in here. If I'm in this race, and I, if I wouldn't have won the other night, I would have been in this race. And I'm sitting in this situation. I got some brand new tires and quick repair. I'm dropping to the back. There's yeah, three I agree. laps left. Because oh, the trouble. $150 in the next race. And see, this is what takes somebody out right here. Oh, the, no they caution. kept it green. Yeah, I agree with what Colleen wow. just said. You know, you got to look at the situation on what you're racing for. There's no point of truly, honestly going for everything. You know, you don't have to show that you're the greatest driver right now. You know, that's the next race. You know, so personally, i, I got to agree. I've got to the back. There's nothing to race for. Just get to the next race. So we are going to have a race right now, though, as we got five cars up front as the 90 continuum that is pretty much been up here all night uh, for the most part. And we'll see if he's able to keep going. He's going to be pushing the ought right now, that 124 car. Now, we have seen the 90. He doesn't like to stay behind somebody, though. I have noticed that. that is I was about to say, I believe that the 90's got space. He'll... Uh, He'll actually step out from the 124 and uh, yeah, I agree. He's not going to push, push around. Him. Yeah, I agree. Well, we're about to find out because he's starting to get a little bit of space. He's not going to go up right there, I don't think. Oh, no. oh. He's, trying to, he, he, he's trying to push him up the track. <laughs> he wants to. Dana Osborne <laughs> cannot finish second. Dana Osborne is not born to finish second. Oh, uh, so we'll have to watch him. We're going to see something then. This is going to be good. We're coming to two to go this time by. As Dana Osborne trying to figure out a way to get up around the 124 and in front of that 43 truck. Uh, David Anderson, who's also, by the way, was your pole sitter. I'm telling you, these guys are not going to come to the checker under green. I'm telling you. just by I can just tell by the way these two guys are sitting there pushing each other. You know, they, they're not. <laughs> if they make it back, it I give it to them. I kind of laugh because the guy that was sitting at this place put me back all the way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like yeah, I, I thought of something better. I ain't gonna worry about that. He already knows. He's done back all the way out. Thing is, that if, I, I think with this inside lane to really get in front, that 90's got to be on him and can't let him move up the track or anything. Because if he moves up, that takes away a little bit of the momentum. Then lets that outside lane get right there. And that's gonna keep the 90 from being able to really get under there. The 90 thought about it. Out. Yeah, he thought about it. He thought about it. That Watch 43 flag. is. Is that 43 trying to side draft? I mean, he is he's, side drafting, yeah. Which, I mean, it's pretty smart, especially if you know that 90, you know, if he really wants to get up there, you're going to side draft, you know, maybe to help you, but also to keep him right behind him. Yeah, if you're able to possibly, you know, side draft a little bit and keep that air off, or put that air down on the spoiler of that 124 car, it helps you suck around him a lot easier, so. Now watch see, as we enter, close. watch as, yeah, well, I was just about to say, watch if we had, as we enter turn three here, watch Dana kind of back off a little bit so he, he can get that run coming yeah, out of four. A, you and we see it here. Yeah, see, I, here think, comes. I think that 124 has got it. I, oh, oh, that 90's trying. He ain't going to get there. Here we go to the stop. It's 124. Uh, Sawyer Ott takes home the checker flag in the Cyber Racing Association last chance race. Tonight, Cyber All-Star Clash, as we will get an interview with our top three, if we can find them. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try to get an interview with them. But, yeah, there's your winner for tonight, that 124 truck. Very good run for him as he started way back in 12th position tonight. See if we can find a couple of these guys and move them up real fast. 
There's Sawyer. I got him. We'll move him into the staging room. Also, I've got Dana here. Okay. Here as well. Who's, also, the, who, who finished? Uh, Who's the other one? Osborne. I don't see him in here. No, I got Dana. Okay. I got Dana Osborne. Okay. And uh, we're Anderson. That's who we're looking for. Yep, Anderson okay. and... Dave Anderson, 43? I got him. Yeah, I got him. Okay. He's actually... There we go. Alright, let's bring in our oh, winner. Yeah. Uh, saw your eye and get a word with him. Hey, saw you got a copy? Ten. Four. Man, you started way back uh, in 12th tonight and was able to bring it home for the win. What was it like on them last few laps? What was your you know, strategy? Was it just to keep that 90 truck behind you? What was your main goal? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, it was pretty stressful, but I just, I knew we had to finish this race to get in the next one. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate Dana Osborne giving me those, those pushes there at the end. I was just going to stick stick with the inside and just, you know, if we finished second, I knew we were transferring. So, we were going to race it out there and just try not to wreck, and that's what happened. So, we'll go get him here in this next race. All right, man. I'm, yeah, not sorry. Keep, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, I just got a question. Um, were you... At any time during that race while you were leading, worried about that outside line gaining a lot more momentum than they actually did? Yeah, because uh, I'd done it, uh, I guess, with 10 to go. I was on the outside, and that's where I wanted to be, but uh, the 90 was just giving me such good pushes that I was able to hold, uh, I guess, the 43 there off. And um, yeah, I, I'm surprised we were able to get there. We were able to hold it off. I didn't think we were going to win that, but uh, it sure feels nice. Yeah, all right, man. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Let's get uh, let's get in with David Anderson. Let's bring him in. Talk to him. Hey, David Anderson, you got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy, Adam. How you doing? Pretty good, man. Uh, well, you started up in first place, finished second, led eight laps, had a very fast track pretty much throughout the night. You think you could have done anything different to possibly get up there and take the win? Well, probably not. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's tough getting by getting by these cars in this fixed setup the problem uh i think we all ran into was you know normally when you're you're racing that outside lane is normally faster and uh so that's the mentality of a lot of guys that are trying to get into the the lead and man we we were doing everything we could there at the end trying to uh i had a buddy of mine right behind me jeff figlin and uh yeah, we were trying to we were trying to get there. Couldn't do it. So that inside lane was a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. I noticed that we actually talked about you know trying to utilize the side draft, and it seems like it wasn't working as good as uh, what you, what everybody was hoping. Um, so you do transfer over into the main race for 150 bucks. I know the goal is to win. You probably ain't going to tell me too much, but what's going to be your strategy going into that race? Well, my strategy in these uh, these oval races is these super speedways is always try to try to start as far up front as you possibly can, and do everything you can to stay there, and then you never know, you know, at the end, you know, it gives you a chance. But uh, other than that, I mean, just go for it. Why not? Jesse, got any questions? Um, no, I think I'm okay. pretty good on that. All right, man, we'll be seeing you next race and possibly talking to you after you win that hundred fifty bucks. That'd be nice. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. All right, next we're going to bring in uh, Dana Osborne and get an interview with him real fast. <coughs> hey, Dana, you got oh. a copy? Hey, Dana. Hey, Dana, you got a copy? Don't know if he's there or not. That's all right. We'll, we'll get with him hopefully next race. So, um, just wait and see. All right, guys, so Jesse, Derek, thoughts on the race? Um, yeah, it was definitely interesting. Um, I actually think there was one or two more cautions than I thought we would have had, but I mean, it's, we're trying to get into the uh, dash for dash, so I mean, it's obviously going to be some hard racing. Derek? Yeah, it, it was exciting as I thought it would be, you know. Like I said at the beginning, some of these guys are really going to try to push to stay up front just so they could probably stay out of the trouble, and that's really what we saw, people trying to get up front, trying to stay out of the trouble. And actually where the trouble was, was they were trying to get up to the front that wanted to. So with the way that racing was to come into now this big race, you know, where our money's on the line, I feel like, like I've said before, the racing is going to be a little bit different, but I feel like the racing is going to be a lot harder and right. we could actually see a chance of a bigger wreck getting ready for that big one to happen. Hey, Dwayne, are you still here? 
Yeah. Okay, uh, real fast, I got a question. Uh, did anybody happen to not make the race that, you know, besides the cars, you know, that's over, that can't make it? Did anybody else happen to not finish the race or anything like that? No, and we actually have two spots open. If anybody wants to donate to the league, then they can buy the last two provisionals. There you go, guys. 150 bucks. Got a chance to win it. So. Uh, how much? How much is that provisional? By chance? <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, it is open setups. Real fast, to get that out there for anybody out there. No, it's fixed. Oh, it's, it's fixed. fixed. Okay. Okay. I, don't yeah, know why I, thought it was I messed open. up and s yeah, I advertised it as open and set up the server as fixed. So oh, okay. <laughs> guess what? It's fixed. <laughs> all right, there you go. Then it's fixed. So, all right, guys, um, that's going to do it for us for right now. We will be back live at eight fifty-five, which is about a, well, a little under an hour right now. So, yeah, take it easy, and we will talk to you all here very shortly. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all here in an hour.